Hi guys, welcome to my channel, The Collector's Hub. Today game is called Alfred Hitchcock, Vertigo. Developed by Pendulo Studios. You play as Ed Miller, a writer, came out unscathed from his car crash down into Brody Canyon, California. Even though no one was found inside the car wreckage, Ed insists that he was traveling with his wife and daughter. Traumatized by the event, he begins to suffer from severe vertigo. As he starts therapy, he will try to uncover what really happened on that tragic day. If you like this series, consider give this video a like. Dad?
Hi, sweetie. Thanks for getting back to me so quickly. It's about an old client. A friend from Big Sur. Ed Miller. He claims it's his fault that his daughter and her mother are dead. He was driving when their car went off a cliff. And he tried to kill himself. He's been in the hospital for a week. He can't get out of bed because of uh, vertigo, I think. Oh, and he was dehydrated. Probably because of um, alcohol. Robert? If you could, I would take care of everything. Travel expenses, hotels, fees. Robert? Whatever you need. I think I remember this Ed Miller. The writer. The one it all started with. Claire Miller, I'm Dr. Lomas. Robert Kerrigan asked, Doctor, you have no idea how grateful I am to you for bringing Ed home. It's a long drive from L.A. When will you get here? If all goes well, early tomorrow morning. I want to get started with that immediately. I'll be waiting for you. A pleasure meeting you, Ed. I'm Dr. Lomas. Doctor in what exactly? Doctor? Bachelor's in Psychology from UC Berkeley. Master's in... <clears throat> Systemic and family psychotherapy from the University why, of Michigan. Why, Robert? And why? <laughs> doctorate in clinical psychology from Stanford. <laughs> why? Hmm. I'll give you free reign. Over my memories, my trauma, my room, my troubles. You got one hour. One. The patient shows no signs of injury to the inner ear. This rules out any physiological causes. This could be a case of acrophobia with neurological origins in the recent traumatic episode, as you suggested. What about his daughter and that woman? Do we know anything? On paper, Mr. Miller has no children. As for that woman, named Faye, there's nothing. However, with regards to your request to treat him outside of the hospital... He's my patient, doctor. He's lost. He knows that he'll never recover on his own, but that doesn't keep him from feeling threatened by me. Or is that just his way of asking for help? No books, no remote, no tablet, no phone. How does he spend his time? Would you like to take a little walk while we chat? And chat about what? 
Your knowledge of psychological violence 101? If I had this kind of vertigo and no other choice but to walk, I'd prefer the cold floor too. The clock is ticking, Doctor. Few factors can shatter self-esteem like a lack of full autonomy regarding one's excretory system. No wonder Ed is in this state. Sorry to insist, Dr. Leonard, but the patient's dizziness, nausea, anxiety are triggered by what exactly? Anything, even just taking a few steps. Should we get started? Take talk, doctor. How do you feel right now? Pretty fucking shitty. Like when some idiot comes and pours salt on your wound, hmm? If you're only going to give me an hour, it could at least be a fruitful one. Shitty. Why? Why? Because I lost a daughter? Because I killed two people? Because everyone treats me like I'm crazy? Because I pee in a bottle from a dolly painting? Because everything is surreal? Because... Because of you. Does shitty work or do you want me to keep going? Keep going. Okay. I'll keep going. Shitty, 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 and shitty. Got that? Why do you think Robert Kerrigan asked me to see you? Because he's loaded, feels guilty, is simply bored. I thought you were friends. What difference does that make? You say it's your fault that your daughter and her mother died? And you don't want to believe me. <laughs> of course. There aren't any birth records connecting you to a daughter. <sighs> I hadn't acknowledged paternity yet. Everything happened so fast. Convince me that this woman Faye exists. What do you want to know? What do you want to tell me? It was about a year ago. <sighs> I just sat down to work. I'd had writer's block for years. But I remembered something I'd made up in an interview. And here today to talk about how to revive your creativity is Ed Miller, author of Face to the Ground, our book recommendation of the month. Ed, can I call you Ed? Welcome and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Though I wasn't too sure you took bribes. Pretty good caviar, right? <laughs> Just to be clear, you're joking here. Remember, you're on public radio. <laughs> Even better, no one's listening. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Ed, have you ever experienced blank page syndrome? <laughs> Constantly. And uh, how do you deal with it? I do a kind of, I don't know, warm up? If the mind doesn't want to start, then we have to ask the body to. So I let my eyes search for a starting point.
when my eyes find the word and it's my fingers turn. I let them write whatever they want after that word. The trick is not to think. Let them be free. Really? Hi! Guess who's calling? <laughs> I bet you don't even know how I got your number. The thing is... To see you again. Oh, I think I lost an earring. If you I'm coming, Samuel! Please! Open the door! Ugh, it hurts me just looking at it. Were you trying to get me to faint? Uh, no. I tripped, and... Can you help me? My battery's dead, and there are no other houses nearby. Ugh, I'm no doctor, but that looks really bad. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of something, but I'll take you to the hospital. No, don't. I'm between jobs, no insurance, no money. I need to lie down, please. Don't worry, the hospital bill's on me. What? No, I couldn't. What if it's nothing? I need to rest. If you bleed to death, you mop it up.
Can I lean on you? Um, maybe you should ask before you actually lean on the person. Ow, oh, 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 hold on. Slower. Hold on. Um, Not so fast. Don't take this the wrong way, but this would be faster if I carried you. Uh, I can walk. Just don't go so fast. Uh, ow! Uh, fine. Carry me. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna grab you here, okay? And here. And lift you up. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Can I lean on you? All That's right, okay with me. Alright, here we me. go. Alright. Hey, am I that heavy? If you had taken your backpack off... Okay. I'm going to let you go. Hold on, hold on. Let me take my backpack off. Now? You want my back to hurt too? Mine already does. <laughs> All right. May I? You may. Do I? Please do. All right. Oh. Phew. Finally. Thank you. Are you good? Comfortable? Hmm? As comfortable as I can be, I guess. Thanks. Um, what did you say your name was? I didn't say what my name was. Oh. Thanks, Mr. Mysterious. I'm Faye. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. <sighs> All right? Bring me some ice. Yeah, I can. Wait, wait. Gently. asleep with the ice. So will I. <sighs> Come on. 
Come on, get off of there. Come on, move it, move it. You've read the message. You're obviously not going to answer me, right? My friends warned me about you. Fine. Screw the earring. Mr. Mysterious, you there? Hey, feeling better? Uh, I think so, thanks. Hey, the ice worked. My ankle looks brand spanking new. Yeah, you heal quickly. Always have. By the way, thanks for the blanket. Thank Pet. It's his blanket. The cat? Bold move. I'd definitely go with a cold girl over a pissed cat. <sighs> Besides, I usually warm up fast. <sighs> Have you eaten? I'm hungry. I can order something online. Something? My favorite. It's the local specialty. I ordered it yesterday, and the day before. There might even be leftovers in the fridge. Something left over? Even better! I'll check the fridge. Don't order anything, okay?
Someone looks pleased. Am I interrupting a special moment? Huh? Porn? Something left over? Porn. It's something... I'm writing. Mr. Mysterious finally makes a reveal. What do you write? Hopefully not mysteries. That would be too predictable. Well, right now, it's a mystery. Even to me. I'm not too sure where this is headed. Well, here you go, in case you get thirsty along the way. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Mm. A toast? Hmm. May I ask where you carried this from? Your kitchen. I was looking for something left over in the cabinets and... You're lying. I looked through your backpack while you were sleeping. And I trusted you. What else did you see in there? I don't really remember. Porn? Something left over? Porn. You did? No. No. Or did you? <laughs> I didn't actually look. Anything else you want to know? Ask. You have until I finish my glass. The riskier the question, the bigger the sip. What are you doing in Cerro Lake? Guess. I'm looking for someone. Who? I'm not sure yet, to be honest. Hmm. Short sip. I'm not about to ask you the classic uh, work or study question, but uh, do you work or study? Neither. I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Ugh. Hmm. Short sip. All right, you've got one more. Make it count. Do you feel like spending the night? Will you cover me up like last time? Or better, you have my word. Words. Now I get why you're so well-spoken. Wolf, Bierce, Plath, Poe, a host of tragic deaths. Should I be scared? My favorite one's missing. The son of the Black Corsair. Emilio Salgari, right? Mm-hmm. How did he die? Uh, suicide. I should be scared. 
Hey, look! One who's alive. I'm saved. Do you like Ed Miller? Ed Miller? What an idiot. Yeah, sounds about right. You know what? Me and that guy have history. Huh. So, what kind of history? The bad kind. Oh. Hmm. Did he take advantage of you in any way? He didn't have time. I was about 13. I was obsessed with this book. Well, the cheapo edition. I heard he was doing a book signing at Rossmore Books. I pretended I was sick to skip school, but my parents didn't buy it. I tried to leave during recess and got caught. After school, I ran so fast that one of my heels broke and I twisted my ankle. But I made it. I got in line and waited and waited. And when there were only three people left in front of me, this old guy showed up, his editor, I think. White hair, white suit. You still here? What about the radio interview? And he took him away. The end. I never even saw his face. Getting grounded felt worse than the ankle, but not nearly as bad as the letdown. Anywho, 13 years old. The cheapo edition you had didn't have a picture of Miller, did it? I'd remember. This edition does. Don't you want to see his face? Yes! No! No? Of course! That's why you didn't want to tell me your name. I, I have to see this with my own... Oh! Petronius, what did I tell you, huh? Sorry, your, your uncle... It, it's fine, it's fine. I think he doesn't like me, is all. He doesn't like any girl. He's quite... Possessive. Oh, so do you get a lot of lady callers? Lots. But I never open the door. Huh, weird. I'd say you opened the door today. First time for everything. Anyway... I'm 23 now. I'll never learn. <sighs> Do you remember the song that Buster sings at the end of the book? I wrote it. Did you write the music? It's a novel. You can't hear it. I could. What? What? No. <gasps> no. Sing it. No way. Sing it. No, no. Please. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it, and I'll write that wrong. I'll sign the hardback edition, picture and all. The bitch in me hates all that I am. The 
Itching you hate all that you are But when we are together Hate each other twice as much That's the reason why we will never part Which goes to show just how itchy we are and ever meant to cause you any harm Cause darling, you need no help with that But it's so fucking funny To see how you destroy your life Or in your case To see how I wreck my what a waste it'd be if we didn't team up Which goes to show just how bitchy we are And then, um, I don't think I need to go into detail about what happened. They're your memories. You decide. Okay, um, no. I'd rather not feed your morbid curiosity. But there's something I do want to know. Do you remember the date? I don't even know today's date. Our brain gathers much more information than we think. Look here. No, no, no. You want to hypnotize me? Please. <laughs> I thought Robert would hire a real professional. The more you hamper my work, the longer it's going to take me to leave. <laughs> so let's go back to that day. You wrote a novel a while back, but you've been suffering writer's block for years. You look through your office window, leaves dance in the wind, birds sing up in the sky. There's a mug in your hands, a warm feeling, a comforting scent. You look at a tree and suddenly an idea. Your cat interrupts you begging for food. And when you go feed it, there's someone at the door.
I'm coming, Samuel! Please! Open the door! Hi. Uh... Hi? It hurts. If you could bring me some ice. <laughs> hmm. Hand me your phone and I'll charge it for you. It's no problem at all. I left my car outside the Force Park entrance. I'll go over there and let you be once the swelling goes down. All right? Do you like to drink? Wine. Never on my own. Why? People like me better that way. You mentioned a certain Samuel. He lives a five-minute drive away, across the forest with his wife. The one who bakes apple pies? You call your cat, Pet. It's short for Petronius. He'll go missing.
How did she do it? I haven't asked her yet. Consider it my way of saying thank you. Hmm. A toast? I just finished my degree. In? Psychology. Oh. Is your cell on, Ed? Yes. What's the date on the screen? October 8th. You'd had writer's block for years. How did it feel to write again? Hopeful, scary. Will you keep the idea going? We'll see. You bought it at an auction, right? Who had it belonged to? The first American flapper, as F. Scott put it. Zelda Fitzgerald? And her husband... Why are you so put off by psychology? If it weren't for my aunt, I'd be dead right now. Explain. Both Zelda and Scott Fitzgerald went to psychologists and psychiatrists. He was an alcoholic. He had died of tuberculosis. She had schizophrenia. And died in a fire at the insane asylum. Got it. Thank you.
All good? <laughs> As I was saying, you have no idea how sorry I am that this didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I had to give it a try. So you did it. I'm cured. <laughs> I'm not going to cure you. You are. We'll continue this later. Get some rest? The smile of the nurse that tore you from your mother's arms. Your first lover. Sleepless in an unknown house, in an unknown bed, staring at an unknown body. Spiders lining up to dive into your empty mouth. All of your TV sets aching to be turned on again. A roach scratching its belly with the bristles of your toothbrush. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good tickle? And then, you hear? Uh, doctor! How long have you been here? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Who's the poem by? Oh gosh, I like to come up with verses while I work. Oh, so then this is where Ed gets it from. Or from my brother, his father. It runs in the family. Where is his father? Hmm. Where did I put the sauce? Oh, it's right over there. I'll get oh, it. Oh, don't be silly. Eddie loves three bean chili. He used to ask me to make it all the time when he was little. What about his parents? Care to eat lunch with me? I usually eat with Ed upstairs, but it's no big deal if he eats alone for once. Besides, I made enough chili to feed an army. I appreciate it, but I think it would be better for Ed if you ate together. I think I might need a little fresh air to take a break and maybe uh, organize some of my notes. You should check out the dock. Plenty of sun at this time of day. I'll make you a sandwich. What do you think about Ed? He's a little stubborn, isn't he? Will he walk soon? It's still too soon to venture a hypothesis. Well, I guess he should just focus on doing his exercises, right? What exercises? Ham, cheese, lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise? Yes, but no ham, if you don't mind. Well, if I was able to help him last time, I'm sure a doctor like you will manage. Help him with what exactly? Vertigo. Vertigo? Oh, let me tell you, Eddie was never afraid of heights as a child. No pirate captain ever is. 
You see that tree? The one with the deck chair? There used to be a little tree house in it. Ed would spend hours on end up there. My brother built it for him. Then Eddie turned it into his very own pirate ship. It was all he could talk about. Pirate this, pirate that. He was obsessed with pirates ever since I got him a book by Salgari. And with his love of pirates came a love of reading too. And see, that's where the writing began. Mystery solved. I don't mean to pry, but... Where are his par- Off you go then, Doctor. Or you might not have time to eat your sandwich. <laughs>